Hi there. So I just watched Alex Cox's film, uh, latest film, I think it's Tombstone Rashomon. I got a lot of, to say about, uh, about the film, actually. Uh, full disclosure ahead of time, I was uh, given a review copy of the film um, through, uh, through a link from the, uh, from the company. I went in not sure how I was going to feel about it. I knew, like, the concept of Tombstone Rashomon, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but I knew it was Alex Cock, and I knew him well from, like, Repo Man and uh, through films like Sid and Nancy, which is a favorite of mine. So I, I went in with, with a favorable, like, uh, look on Alex Cox as a director, but I wasn't sure on the premise of the film. And before we get into anything, let's get the premise out of the way because it's really different. And basically, it are, there are these uh, time travelers, they are uh, kind of like documentarians. They go to go for like the the OK Corral uh, for that date, but they overshoot it by one day. So instead of seeing like the the OK Corral and the gunfight, basically what happens is they're there the day after. So they decide to basically uh, sit down with everybody and just talk to them and get everybody's like perspective on what led up to what happened. And uh, what's, you know, basically where it's going to go from there. Now, if you expect, like, to see any of that stuff in, in the film, like talking about, like, the time travel aspects or how they got back in time or even see the documentarians on screen, uh, that's, it doesn't focus on that. We're focusing primarily and strongly on, on the cast of characters around uh, the uh, gunfight at the OK Corral and the ones that were affected by it. We get different stories told from different perspectives that uh, basically showing us the lead up to uh, to the gunfight and then show us the gunfight and how it happened. One of the neat things that they do, and this is a very experimental and a very Alex Cox thing to do, is that he really, really wants us to focus on the fact that these are very different perspectives and people are seeing them shaded through their own eyes. A couple examples of that are in one story that we hear. Uh, it is the wife of, uh, of Doc Holliday. Uh, and she, when she says the story, when she says any of the male names in the story and she uses any pronouns for them, whether it be White Earp or Doc Holliday or anyone, uh, she says it in, in, the, in the female uh, one. So she doesn't say well, White Earp is him. She calls him her. And uh, that goes, I, at first I thought maybe it was a slip up, but as it goes throughout, she she sticks with that, and she calls every male character uh, with, with a female pronoun, giving her perspective on what she takes out of, of this whole incident. And it's a really neat and clever thing to do. Um, I wasn't sure on it at first, and at first it, it kind of, I found it a bit jarring, but as she kept on with her story, I, uh, I started to see what they were doing, and I, I kind of enjoyed it for that. There is a uh, another story told later on from a different perspective, and uh, basically, uh, with in, in his story, we actually see like a modern rather than like seeing like a horse and buggy or or, or horses, we actually see like a modern day kind of SUV, uh, police vehicle, and it's not something that's done by by accident. It's done specifically for a reason, to uh, to give his his perspective and to make us kind of see. Uh, kind of get, put ourselves into his perspective and actually get what he is, uh, what he's saying. So it was extremely well done that way. It is a lower budget film, even for Alex Cox. This is kind of a lower budget uh, film. Uh, there's not a lot. I wouldn't say like a lot of like kind of big standard, like big Hollywood actors in this one. Uh, Michelle Bowers in it, uh, playing the uh, you know the Ali Earp, which was actually really cool. I'm a big fan of Michelle Bauer. Uh, overall, I got to say everybody did a great job. There were a couple standout performances in the film. Uh, the actor that played uh, Wyatt Earp, I thought, did a really good job. I wasn't quite sold on him in, initially, and uh, but uh, as it goes through, he's got this stern uh, type of like really kind of Western type look to him. And he's a guy that I would definitely see like playing in uh, in westerns in the future. He does a really good job. I'm gonna I gotta get his name right here. Is Adam Newbery, uh, who really stands out to me. The guy that stands out more than anyone else. Is, uh, is Benny Lee Kennedy as Ike Clanton. I really think that Ike Clanton is incredible in the film. Uh, and you, you don't see him. He's, you know, this is typically the, you know, he's, he's the Western baddie. He's the bad guy. That's, that's normally what you get out of the Ike Clanton character. That's what you've seen in, uh, in all of the films. But uh, although he does have that, that look, that, uh, that bad guy look, 
I, I got to say, I was really impressed with the way that he did it. He didn't come off as like your typical bad guy. He came off as a, uh, as very much more fleshed out. If there was anybody else that I got to say that stood out in the film, it was the, it was, it was the sheriff of the film and, uh, played by, I think was played, I think by, by Jesse Lee. And I'm going to get the name wrong. Uh, Pashiko, um, uh, if I mispronounce that, I, I do apologize, but the sheriff really stands out because his character tells his story in a very diplomatic matter of fact, this happened this type of way. Um, and I loved it. I like his, when he was telling his story, I, d it was like everything he says sounds perfectly legit, but I'm not quite sure I believe him. But he does it in such a diplomatic, political way, politician-style way, uh, that uh, you know exactly his character. You know exactly the perception that he's going to have coming in. And uh, you know the perception that he's going to have coming out. This movie is all about perception. It's all about how, we, how one event can be viewed from different, from, from different people. And how one line, like, I only need four feet, uh, can be taken in such different context or one word whether it's misheard or not one one sentence whether it's misheard or not uh, which talks about the whether they have been unarmed or not has a paramount difference on how you perceive how it went off was this a was this a fair gunfight was it a massacre uh, you'll have to watch the film to uh, to find out, and you won't really find out. You'll have to discover uh, through the different perspectives what you take out of the film. And what I took out of the film is that I went into this uh, unsure about the concept, not sure that if I was going to like the film or not. Uh, a bit iffy at the start of the film because I wasn't getting getting explanation. Then when I kind of realized as I go through the film that the explanation for the like for the time travel up that doesn't mean anything we're, we're here to look at the perspective of these people it really it really is exactly what it say, says it is tombstone rashomon and for that i utterly enjoyed it and it's one that i look forward to like getting an like, actual physical copy of and watching again and kind of going through it uh, i'd like to know your opinion on it as well but um uh, i i personally thought it was a really fun film and really different and i like films that aren't the norm that kind of push what what the norm is i got tombstone and wider up in my collection uh they're very different films than this and uh people are going to go in uh to this and they're going to think tombstone they're going to think wider they're going to think like the regular western or they're going to see the time travel aspect and they're going to think that but what they really need to focus on is the rashomon part of that title because that's where it really comes into play alex cox i think did a tremendous job with this film especially for a lower budget and uh and a, and a cast that's probably like not a big hollywood cast but uh i think they all did a great job and uh, let yourself kind of just get into that mindset of like you're going to be seeing something from different perspectives and uh, in different ways and i think you'll really enjoy it i don't give like a normal like a 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 type of review for anything like this i'm more i'm more dr Whiffula when it comes to uh to this type of thing so the one thing that i will say is uh for me it was a, a very enjoyable ride I love the different perspectives. I love the kind of the indie experimental way that he goes with it. I love experimental art house films. And this one is definitely along that vein. I am Aaron. Thank you for watching The Call to Cinema. And I will see you later on uh, because uh, I'm probably going to rewatch this to, uh, j just to make sure before I, I post this review. But I'm pretty sure what I'm, my thoughts right now are exactly what they're going to be after I watch this again. Have a great day.